This is a Kahan TV Sports Break. Okay, so last time we were here on Sports Break NBA, we just concluded the opening weekend of the NBA playoffs with every series being 1-0. Let's see how the losing teams responded. On Monday, the defending champion Cleveland Cavaliers beat the Indiana Pacers to go up 2-0 in the series. It was a slightly more comfortable victory than their Game 1 victory, despite Indiana making a late push, but they fell just short despite Paul George's 32-8-7. The Cavs got big performances from all of their big three. In San Antonio, the Spurs blew out the Grizzlies to go up 2-0 in their series, although Grizzlies head coach David Fisdale was critical of the officiating crew for the discrepancy in free throw attempts and foul calls. Take a listen. Kawhi shot more free throws than our whole team. Explain it to me. We don't get the respect that these guys deserve because Mike Conley doesn't go crazy. He has class and he just plays the game. But I'm not going to let them treat us that way. You know, I know Pop's got pedigree and I'm a young rookie, but they're not going to rook us. That's unacceptable. That was unprofessional. My guys dug in that game and earned the right to be in that game and they did not even give us a chance. Take that for data. <laughs> Take that for data. <laughs> I want that on a shirt. Well, I didn't see the game, so I can't comment too much there. But it's definitely not unheard of in the NBA, to say the least. Grizzlies players obviously echoed their coach's sentiment, offering to pay the $30,000 fine Fisdale received for his post-game comments. Which is just stupid. If you can criticize players... You should be able to criticize the officiating. It's just as big a part of the game as the players' performances. But anyways, moving on. The Toronto Raptors bounce back from their poor game one at home to tie their series with the Bucks. Kyle Lowry was much improved over his previous meager four-point performance, putting in 22 and scoring the game-winning basket to put the game out of reach. It wasn't the game-winning basket, but it put the game out of reach. Although critics would say it wasn't the strongest performance, with Milwaukee squandering scoring opportunities themselves, this series is sure to get more interesting as the scene shifts to Milwaukee. This is my favorite series. The eighth-seeded Chicago Bulls comfortably defeated the Boston Celtics to go up 2-0, taking the first two games on the road. Now this series definitely has an asterisk, as off-the-court issues have compromised the situation. As we all know, Isaiah Thomas' sister was tragically killed in a car accident before Game 1. Some would say that Thomas played okay, and it's not his fault that they lost. First of all, Isaiah Thomas had a great regular season, led the NBA in fourth quarter points. He's the guy with the killer instinct that gave them their identity and landed them the number one seed in the East. Thomas seems more sad to me right now than angry. And I know it's tough to think about basketball in a situation like this. For all I know, basketball is the farthest thing from his mind. But if I had to give him advice in terms of turning this series around, I would tell him to somehow try to channel his energy into some ruthless aggression and take out his frustration on the Bulls. Attack the basket, take some hits, get to the free throw line. This series isn't over. The Celtics are definitely capable of winning four out of five, but not with a timid Isaiah Thomas. I'm sorry. Terrible things happen in life, and I sympathize 100%. But there's a lot at stake here, too. If Thomas can't shake this off and focus, again, not blaming him, it's completely understandable. But if he can't focus on this series, then I would seriously consider talking to him about shutting him down for the playoffs because the Celtics may have a better chance without him. All that being said, the Bulls are turning it on at just the right time. They got a lot of talent and playoff experience and for all the talk about the Cavs not caring about the number one seed, it seems they have dodged a bit of a bullet because they would have been in for a first round dogfight with the Bulls Instead, they're coasting through a series with the Pacers, 
with a favorable matchup against the Bucks or Raptors after that instead of a fired up John Wall and the Wizards. Speaking of John Wall and the Wizards, John Wall had 32 points and 9 assists and a great defensive play up by 3 with a minute to go. Knocked the ball away and received the outlet to put the game away. Looking good for the Wizards. In Houston, the sequel to the Battle of the MVP candidates was much closer in this one, but the Rockets still prevailed despite a 50-point triple-double from Russell Westbrook. James Harden was not too shabby himself, scoring 38 with 8 assists, 35 points, excuse me, with 8 assists, including some critical baskets late in the game. Westbrook dazzled, and the Thunder actually led this game through three quarters, and it became a back-and-forth game, but in the end, Houston's quality shone through, and they're headed to Oklahoma up 2-0. In Oakland, the Warriors demolished the Trailblazers to go up 2-0, all while resting Kevin Durant, who picked up a tiny knock in Game 1. Makes me sick. And finally, I know we went out of order, but the Clippers tied their series with the Jazz on Tuesday, ruthlessly attacking the paint as the Jazz were playing without their injured rim protector, the Frenchman Rudy Gobert. I have no sympathy for the Jazz. It's happened to the Clippers, injuries that is, countless times in the playoffs, and no one let us make any excuses. Yeah, us. Clipper Nation here. All I hear, all I've heard, is that the Clippers never get it done. They're not good enough. They Never that they played the Blazers last year without Paul and Griffin, or how they played Game 6 against the Rockets two years ago with a one-legged Chris Paul. So to the Utah Jazz, tough luck. I feel sorry for you, but not really. Good luck. That is all for this edition of Sports Break. This has been Kahan TV Studios. Take that for data.